yes, Flanagan, my good sir. Good to see you. I, uh... Archduke Charles, I know that whatever assignment you have for me must be very important, but I can't sit on the sidelines any longer. I need to end Big Johnny's gang. Well, actually, that's why I've wanted to see you. It was? This morning, we've lost Sergeant Miranda. Well, you see, she was on a patrol when... Oh, 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 want a cracker? Yum, yum, I want a cracker. <laughs> oh, crud. So you see the need. I'm putting you, my best detective, on the case. It's been two weeks to the day since we defeated Algernon. You'd think I'd be happy, but in those two weeks I've lost everyone I ever cared about. First, Nigel Humphreys, devoted servant of the Yam God, was killed by the same zombies he refused to believe existed. Then my best friend, Mr. Warbles, was reassigned to the Railroad Crimes Division. Sergeant Miranda got ambushed out on the street, and then, worst of all, my beloved Anne was killed by Big Johnny's assassin while I sat by, helpless to stop it. I've spent the past two weeks tracking him down, only to find myself confronted by a truckload of bad memories at Anne's bar. Oh my, it's so good to see you, detective. Where's Anne? She's dead, Merv. Big Johnny's goons were, were after me, but they got her instead. After all that, after all that, we rescued Nigel too just for him to die from Algernon zombies. There, there. They're in a better place now. They're dead, Merv. Dead. Sure they are, Detective. But there's nothing you could have done for them. And there's sure as hell nothing you can't do but crying about it. There is something I can do, Merv. I'm going to find Big Johnny. And I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him dead. My leg! I can't feel my legs. Where's my arm? <laughs> Oatmeal raisin! Pardon my language, dear Mr. Fortescue, but look at how badly that chap's been mangled. We must go to him at once. I haven't seen a fellow done in this ugly since I was midshipman of the Majestic at the Nile. I was standing right beside Westcott, sir, when he took that musket ball to the throat. Gurgling and bleeding all over he was, sir. You were on the Majestic, Fortescue. Fascinating. I was third of the Orion at the time. Capital man that Sam is. Did you ever get to meet him, Mr. Fortescue? No, sir, but our very own John Wellington was in the superb at the second Algericus, and he never stops going on about him. Oh, the master's first mate, Wellington. Yes, sir. You've never lived till you've heard him tell the fates of the real Carlos, sir. Oh, well, I... Enough of this. Are you two going to help me or something? Zeus! Sorry, old man. Quick, Mr. Fortescue, take his other arm. We've got to get him to the doctor right away. He should have laid off the tea and biscuits. What are I moving your dad, Alfredo? That's right, you crazy criminal. Come with me. Now, Detective, I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Sure we can. But I'm here, and so are you. Big Johnny. Big Johnny's dead. He was getting slow. He was getting weak. Some of his boys got restless. Then who ordered them to kill me? Who killed Anne? <laughs> You're still mad about that, aren't you? She was my wife, Alfredo. I loved her. She was my joy. My crown. It was just business, nothing personal. You broke your promise with the family and our new boss got his revenge. And now I'm gonna get mine. Oh, well, let's not be hasty now. Who's this new boss? Go to hell. Tell me. Okay, okay. To tell you the truth, I've never met him. He's in hiding. He gets all his letters through a middleman, though. 
So uh, I, I don't know who he is, but I know where you can meet him. When's this next meeting? And who delivers it? We do it by dead drop. Next meeting's tonight, but I've got no idea who delivers it. We do it by dead drop. I never see the guy. Then I have no more use for you. <laughs> My god, who's this? We aren't sure, but he's had it pretty rough. Do you think you could patch him up? What's he saying? Carcinogen? D does he think he has cancer? Don't be silly. It sounds like he's saying cinnamon. He must be hungry. Why does he want revenge on Wimbledon? Did he lose a tennis match or something? It doesn't matter, I suppose. Dr. Thornton, you're going to need to take a look at him. Take him right inside and uh, lay him down. I, I need to work in peace. You two can go rest. The wind roared down the city streets like an angry horse. It was quiet, but not peaceful. All of the people, happy and relaxed back at home with their families, completely unaware that outside a war wages. A war between crime and justice, between good and evil, between us and them. So what do we do with him, sir? Does he join the crew? I doubt if he'll be much use reefing topsails. Yes, well, I suppose you're right. But we can't very well just turn him out onto the street, can we? I mean, the poor chap's already died once, and I doubt the good doctor would be able to save him again. And sir, there's that matter of him being thirsty for revenge, whether it's Cinnamon, Wimbledon, or Cinnogen, sir. True, true. And I hope that matter will be addressed when he wakes up. Perhaps he was just hungry, and instead of revenge, he wanted an orange. But first, I must address the men. Midshipmen, you may beat to quarters. Me gallant crew, good morning. Sir, good morning. I hope you are all quite well. Quite, Quite well, well sir. And, and you, sir? I'm in reasonable health, and happy to meet you all once more. You, you do, do us proud, proud sir. <laughs> I am the captain of the pinafore. And, and a right, right good, good captain, captain too. You. You're very, very good, and be it understood, I command a right good crew. He is, he is very, very, very good, good and, and be it understood, he commands a right good crew. Though we're later to appear, I can hand reef and steer and ship a salvagee. I am never known to quail at the fury of a gale, and I'm never, never sick at sea. No, never. Never? Then give three cheers and one cheer more for the hearty captain of the pin of four. Then give three cheers and one cheer more for the hearty captain of the pin of four. Oh, look, here comes Dr. Thornton now. 
Tell me, Doctor, how's our patient? Well, I think it might be time to complete the procedure, Captain. And I might need your help with it too, if I may. Of course. Let's go resurrect our fallen friend now. And give three cheers and one cheer more for the hearty captain of the beginning of four. And give three cheers and one cheer more for the hearty captain of the beginning of four. Very good. I'll stand here, and when I flip the switch, he'll awaken. Then you two just need to do as much as you can to stop him from exerting himself too much. Got all that, midshipman? Yes, sir. Very good. Then flip away, Dr. Thornton. Who are you? What's this? My name is Captain Putnam of His Majesty's Royal Navy. We are joined by Midshipman Fortescue and your savior, our physician, Dr. Thornton. Yes, dear boy, you were in quite a state when these two brought you in. Quite a state indeed. Yes, I haven't seen a fellow as nearly dead as you were, sir, since I was Midshipman of the Majestic at the Nile. I was standing right beside Captain Westcott when he took that musket ball to the throat. Such gurgling and blood as you've never seen. Oh, yes. And at the time, I was serving across the bay as third of the Orion. Our dear Captain Sam Juarez fared much better than Westcott, luckily, but I still dread the fate of all poor souls upon the Dip Roy's flagship. That was a nasty sight, sir. Of course, once the ratlines caught, and then the mainsail, we all knew that what was bound to happen. But the sight, that fireball, the death of over a thousand men and boys, all gone in an instant. Splinters raining down over the whole bay like hellfire, their corpses littering the water, their lifeless eyes staring up into the sky above, as if waiting for heaven's judgment to be passed upon us. The men who murdered them, the waters of the Nile running red with the combined blood of friends and foe, thousands of young widows barred from even seeing their beloveds again, parents never again able to lay eyes on their sons, Children too young to understand that their fathers died as heroes, saving England from the dreaded grasp of Napoleon's iron fist of death. What? what? Well, we've told you who we are. Now who are you? And why were you injured so badly? Well, I'm Nigel Humphreys. I'm a gardener. I even used to have my own TV show where I'd show people how to grow stuff and teach them how to garden. It was fun. But then I had to fight an evil man named Algernon Grady. And after defeating him... After defeating him? After defeating him, I got attacked by an angry mob. They ripped me apart. This... was this... I had to use all of my expertise to save you, and sadly, that required replacing much of you with robot parts. A damn god wouldn't like that. Sorry? No, nothing. That is terrible indeed, but have you any idea why you were attacked by an angry mob? No, my, my friends were there with me too, but they, no, they aren't, I guess they aren't my friends anymore. Detective Finnegan. Oh, Finnegan, not Cinnamon. Detective Finnegan took advantage of me and the Yam God to get what he wanted. And as soon as I stopped being useful, he sicked that angry mob on me. Yes, that, that must have been what it was. Yes, I suppose that makes sense. But you're safe now. Safe from the mob and safe from that awful Finnegan chap. And we'll take good care of you here. You've no need to worry about- I'm going after Finnegan. Of course, my dear boy. And we'd all love to help you get your satisfaction from this Finnegan bloke. But you're in no state to do so yet. It'll be months before the implants completely adapt to you. There's no telling. I'm going and getting revenge on Detective Finnegan for leaving me dead. And I'm saving countless others from my same fate. Try and stop me if you like, but I'd rather not hurt any of you. You seem like fine people trying to live honest lives. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Easy there, easy there! All hands, charge!
Whose idea was it to give him robot implants? Well, I didn't... There, there was no indication he was, he was going to use them on us. I, I thought it would help him defend against attackers next time. There was no indication he was going to use them on us. Yes, well, let's go track him down before he hurts anyone else. I was in the wilds once again, alone and confused. I was lost, but at least this time I had a goal. I wanted revenge. I needed to get Finnegan and show him what happens to traitors. But then I saw him. Hey, what's going on? It's the cops, they're after me. Step behind me. That's impressive. You looking for work? I could use someone like you. Doing crimes? Yeah, that's the idea. I work for Big Johnny, or at least I used to. He's dead now, which is why I've been reduced to hiding from the police in the woods. But with your help, I think we can get back to where we once were, rich and powerful. It was a chance. Mm. A chance to get back at Detective Finnegan, that traitor. A chance to have friends again family. I had to take it. Over the course of that week, I worked my way up from entry level thug to cream of the crop mob boss. First, I ordered a hitman to kill Finnegan. But when that failed, I had to do it myself. All right, boss, what's the plan here? This is the plan. I shall finally have revenge on that dreadful enemy of the Yam God, Finnegan. If you powder dry men, we saw Nigel walk right into these woods. No, get back here, Finnegan. You meddling mariners. I almost had him. You left us no choice. You killed and threatened dozens of innocents. Join the Mafia, and you expect us to just stand by and let it go on? Listen to me. No, you listen to me, you hooligan. You aren't a bad man, Nigel, but this revenge quest isn't right. You've got to- No, Captain. I'm sorry. As long as that detective's loose, the whole world is in danger. I need to do this. Man, I need a cookie. Hey buddy, you ran, jeez, this ain't football, man. This may not be football, but you're on the family's payroll. Where are those letters that you're taking? Where, tell me where your boss is. All right, all right, he's up in a house nearby. Here, take the letters. I can take you to him if you want. You better believe I want. Oh, okay, man. Go, buddy. Okay, man. Well, we lost them. But Marius is with Finnegan now. Let's go and drive back to the family headquarters. Yeah, boss, sounds good. Hell, hell and damn. Nigel's getting away in a car. Quick, to the ship and we shall pursue them. All right, Captain. Let's go. <laughs> My bad. Hey, boss, can we stop at the store quick? I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, sure. You want anything? Nothing in that store could possibly satisfy me. I thirst for only revenge, not but the blood of my enemies. All right, I think I'll get a baguette and some cheese. I think that'll be pretty tasty. Mr. Fortescue, what do you spy from the crow's nest? 
Is that him, midshipman? What is it? What's he carrying? Spit it out, man. He's carrying a baguette. This is a dark day. To see that, as a captain of the Royal Navy, as a paragon of all that is good and just in the world. That's stretching it a bit, don't you think, sir? I mean, India, Africa, Shush. China. The main point America, is that Nigel really has a baguette, which means now he serves our mortal enemy, Napoleon Bonaparte. Now more than ever, we must put a stop to this. Thank you, DJ. It's good to be home. Could you put the kettle on for me while we wait for our guests? I've had a strange urge to drink motor oil. Could be because I'm part robot now, but I've been enjoying it recently. Yeah, boss, sure. And the guests? Detective Finnegan will be here before too long. I know he will. Send him up to me and I will deal with him. Is this the place? Why would I lie when you're about to kill me? Open the door, Marius. All right. Hey. Hello, detective. Could I interest you in a motor oil? I'll pass, thanks. Where's your boss? I'll take you to him. You want a piece of baguette? Yeah, man, I'll take a bit. Go for it. We're we expecting anybody else? I don't think so. Who are you? I am Sir Arthur Putnam of His Majesty's Royal Navy. And you, French soldiers, I implore to drop your baguettes. No way, I paid six dollars for this. <laughs> then you leave me no choice. Mr. Fortescue, you may clear for action. Yes, sir. I don't like the look of this. Grab the boys, let's teach them a lesson. Yeah, hell yeah. Company, fire! Look everyone, we must stop Naruto. Wait, but who? As I suspected, you are so heartless you kill with no forethought to your victims. Indeed, it is I, the reforged Nigel Humphreys. But, Nigel, you were killed by those zombies. There was nothing that we could have done. So you left me there to be torn apart by that angry mob? You're a detective! Surely you could have gotten control of the situation and arrested a few of the instigators. But they were zombies, Nigel. Zombies! But zombies aren't real. <laughs> But I don't want to hurt you, Nigel. I want to help you. That's what you said last time. You were just using me to get back at your rival, Aldrinoon Grady. And as soon as we were done, you got rid of me. Nigel, what happened was terrible. I never meant for it to happen. None of us did. But when we went after Aldrinoon, when we crossed Big Johnny, we knew the risks. Nigel. 
I'm putting an end to this. Company, prepare to fire. What? No! Fire! Finnegan. No. Nigel. Nigel. You sacrificed yourself to save me while I was trying to kill you. You really are my friend. But now... Hush, Nigel. We don't want revenge anymore. <clears throat> it's finished. I love you. I love you all. Wait, there's no blood. Are you sure you're dying? I'm pretty sure. Wait, did you miss me with all your shots? Well, they are smooth bore. And we're much better at firing cannons anyways. But those would have been too hard to get up the steps. Well, it's a thought that counts. Let's get out of here. That's fine with you. I think so. Everybody's happy, right? No more revenge? <laughs> Look, it's Mr. Warbles and Sergeant Miranda. Look, that's Detective Warbles to you. A promotion, Warbles. That's great. We should all go celebrate. The Velvet Glove? I couldn't agree more.